Yeah, so the topic we're covering today is executive functioning and some of the difficulties around that. It's being presented by me, Katie Dunphy, Education and Training Manager with SBHI. Okay, so today we'll discuss executive functioning, so what it is, then how it can impact an individual. So what I've done with this section is I've broken it into different age ranges from children to adults to try and um, help get the information across and notice different things. So then I've talked about what can help and summed up everything at the end. Okay, so as I mentioned, you can write notes if you wish, but there is no need. Everyone will get a copy of the presentation and a recording of the presentation. So you can sit back, listen, and hopefully learn a few. You may already know a lot of it, if not more of it than I do. So when we talk about executive functioning, um, a lot of people would describe it like the CEO or the boss of the brain. Or another analogy I thought was very useful was that executive functioning is like the, the conductor of an orchestra it controls an awful lot of different things um, to do with everyday functioning. <clears throat> and it itself is controlled by the frontal lobes of the brain. Now, the cause of any of these executive functioning difficulties is due to injury to the frontal lobes, damage to the white matter tract, agnesis or partial agnesis of the corpus callosum. And that in particular is, um, is uh, quite often related to not just hydrocephalus, but spina bifida. Um, a lot of kids would have agnesis or partial agnesis of the corpus callosum and damage to other brain areas that are connected to the frontal lobes. Okay, so executive functioning themselves, the skills, they're a set of in, a skills needed to be independent um, in all different aspects of life and in everyday living. So they're mental processes that allow us to self-regulate, so control, control our emotions, um, to plan, to focus our attention and to remember instructions, which is a, a big one, um, okay, and to juggle multiple tasks successfully. So this is an area of difficulty for a lot of people who have executive functioning challenges. Okay, so I'm going to break it down a little bit more. So um, impulse or emotional control um, are definitely can be um, very much impacted. And this can impact then on a child and an adult's social skills and social abilities. Their organizational skills can be impacted. So how they do everyday tasks or everyday living from a school, college, work, life. Um, flexibility. Now, what I mean by flexibility, it's not that they can put their legs up over their head or anything like that. It's the flexibility to move from one activity to another or to um, from one task to another. In even, you know, we have found that this has proven to be a difficulty in, in the school environment initially when they go from subject to subject and they can't can't. Uh, juggle that and, and have that flexibility. And then that does not improve often too much as the child goes on in years. Then working memory is a big one. This one is certainly a big one for a lot of individuals with spina bifida and or hydrocephalus. How they hold information and then how they then use that information can be impacted. The self-monitoring, so that could be um, emotionally self-monitoring, that could be in situations, monitoring the situation and being able to understand the place in it and change and adapt where needed. Or it can be when somebody is doing an activity. So when they might be in the middle of doing a project and when they're doing that project, they often aren't able to, to feedback or get that self-monitoring and change what they're doing. They'll keep going with something that's not right. Planning and prioritizing is a big one, um, and this can this can really be a challenge as a, as a child moves into secondary school. That planning and prioritizing of what's important, what's not, time wise, and then that can certainly be a challenge in college or further education, and then again in work in a work environment. How plan their time, 
and organize their time um, and organize their work. So that planning and prioritizing, seeing what's the most important thing to do and when it's the most important time to do it. And then task initiation. This has come up a lot, especially, you know, in the school environment that I would have dealt with um, in my in my earlier years and still continue to do so. But I would have found that a lot of schools would have asked me about this, why a child might sit there and not start a task. And one or two schools mislabel kids as being kind of lazy or not bothered or not wanting to do something. Um, but it isn't really to do with that. It's, a, it's an executive functioning difficulty. They can have that information there. They might know kind of what they're meant to do, but just to have that get up and go to do it can be a, can be a big challenge. So that task initiation can be prove a challenge for people. And then that continues on as somebody will get older. OK, so I'm going to give you an example of how um, executive functioning works. So this is very simplistic and um, so I beg your pardon, but I'm going to give you an example by, you know, drawing a picture of yourself. So what steps do you need to do when you think of drawing a picture of yourself? OK, so the first one, analysing a task and figuring out what needs to be done. OK, so right, I have to draw a picture on myself. What needs to be done? I need to draw my head. I need to, am I just drawing my head? Will I draw my body? Um, what kind of colours will I need? What kind of things will I need? What will I actually do? What paper? The second thing, plan how to handle the task. So that leads on from the first one. Right, OK, I'm going to start. I'm going to draw my head and do my hair and do bits and bobs after that. So get organised. Right, what do I need for that? Right, I need paper. I need pens. I need colours. Right, I have 10 minutes to do this, so I will try and get all that in, that the equipment in the first two, three minutes, and then I will start drawing a picture of myself. Figure out how much time is needed to carry out the task, as I said there, and set aside that time. Okay, and then make adjustments as needed. Right, okay, I'm after drawing my hair. My hair looks a bit funny. Maybe I need to draw a little bit more. Maybe I need to do um, bigger eyes. Maybe I need to do a bigger smile. So making adjustments as needed as going uh, as you would going along and then finish the time uh, the task in the time allotted. So you can see how many executive functioning things you have to do in that very simple task. Like any of us would or most of us would just take out a piece of paper, draw ourselves, have maybe have to think about it and think, hmm, how would I do it? But for somebody with executive functioning difficulties, that's a lot of processes. And if any of those go wrong, going down through the task list, it'll break down the whole activity and make it nearly impossible to do what you have to do. So you can see how something very simple can impact and how it needs so many different executive functioning skills to do one very simple task. Now, that's just a very simplistic example and um, just a way to get, to get you thinking about executive functioning and how it works. Right. So signs of executive functioning issues in preschool. So we start, a child can get frustrated easily, um, can have trouble following directions and can get quite upset by um, not those and they'll, it'll seem like um, unreasonably upset. And this where it might lead to frequent tantrums if something is not going right or if it's something is not going the way they think it should be going and can act out aggressively. And that's built up and pent up frustration of not being able to do something and to do it the way they wish to do it. Um, can't master, master simple classroom tasks. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of other processes in this, but simple things like picking toys up, putting them away, or picking colors up, putting them back into a box, putting that box somewhere else requires organization skills. You know, so very simple tasks within a classroom, within a creche, within like junior infants type classroom, it, it can it can prove um, a challenge, a challenge for kids. Um, can sometimes want to talk or raise their hand or um, kind of interrupt, but don't remember fully what they were actually going to say because they can't hold that thought process. So that working memory, holding that information there, they will have their idea and have their answer and then when they put their hand up and they try and get the attention to get it out, that working memory system hasn't um, 
have kept up with them in a way and they don't remember what they, they should have said or would be saying. And they can insist on doing things a certain way and will have trouble making adjustments. So that's that flexible thinking and that self-monitoring. And frequently gives unrelated answers to questions. You kind of wonder where they plucked it from, pulled it from the sky. But again, it's that um, it's a sign of executive functioning challenges. Okay, then signs of executive functioning issues in the five to ten years. So it can start one task and get distracted and then not finish the first one. So I know we would all, even adults, children would all do this, but it, it happens more frequently for executive functioning difficulties. Um, can solve a maths problem one way, but when they're asked to use another method to try and solve it, they can get really distracted by it, they'll be unable to do it, and it can cause a little bit of anxiety not being able to do it. Can focus on the least important thing rather than the most important thing. So that's where you're planning and prioritizing. So that prioritization piece comes in. Incorrect um, homework written down or the wrong books brought home. So this is something that is frequently mentioned um, when I've been speaking with schools and with parents. Um, and that's often where a special needs assistant can be really, really helpful, even though they're there to support children with their um, primary care needs. This is an area of difficulty for children with spina bifida and or hydrocephalus. So something that they often kind of keep an eye and give a hand with. They can have a very messy desk and lose, but you know, uh, lose their stationery, folder, work. So that's your organisational skills. Um, so keeping everything together and keeping everything organised. And then they can panic when rules or routines have changed. So this one, um, it affects some children more than others, but some children react really badly to that and really badly to that transitioning from one activity to another piece. Um, and it can lessen with time as they kind of get used to it and as there are um, kind of little methods put in place to reduce that anxiety and that uh, emotional overwhelming sensation um, for the kids. And they can struggle to find the right information in a word problem. So this really becomes a problem when they have to do um, maths or if there's language interpretation or language processing issues as well. So finding that right information in, in a word maths problem in particular can prove difficulty when they get to um, third, fourth, fifth standards. And then can stick with a plan even when it's not working. So we, that's that self-monitoring piece. So if they have poor self-monitoring, they'll keep going and they'll keep going even when it's not right. Um, and even though there might be something telling them that it's not right, they don't have that ability to nearly just stop it, park it, restart it, or go down a different line. They'll just keep going with the incorrect thing. So then signs of executive functioning issues in the 10 to 14 years. Now, these ages are loose um, because it really depends on the developmental um, abilities of the child and the emotional abilities of the child as well and what age range they are there. So when I give these, these are kind of guides rather than this is set in stone what will happen in um, 10 to 14 years. But just, just so I'm not getting myself in trouble there now. They can often want to invite kids over, but never get around to organising it. So that task initiation and that organisational um, piece may not happen. Um, can hesitate to make own plans and follow what the other kids or family are doing. So that, again, that links to the, the last point. Um, would often still arrange their, their work, their crayons, their markers, their pens, their geometry set, whatever they need in class while the others are halfway through their work. So they'll be trying to get organized and trying to build on that skill, but it just doesn't happen very quickly. Um, okay, and they can have difficulty starting a task, so that task initiation. Can focus on less important details. So this becomes a greater problem, especially as they get older, um, where they have to plan and prioritize and when they have to find what's the most important thing. And this would be really important coming up to the junior search years and the leaving search years um, when they're doing schoolwork <clears throat> and school study. Can frequently get upset about small things. So that's self-monitoring piece. And um, yeah, that, that, can, that can be uh, a challenge. <clears throat> 
Um, and where, where I put this on in, often, te- often thinks that the teacher is being unfair when they're told to finish their work at home when other kids have finished it in the classroom environment and they'd have to finish it off. They feel like they're nearly being punished or that they have to get extra homework because they didn't do it quickly enough, but it's just to get, get a task done. And it's just because of that, you know, executive function challenges where they might not have planned and prioritised, they might not have gotten organised quickly enough. That task initiation piece has been has been slower. So that these are some things that can impact later on. So then 14 to 18 years, these kind of crossover between the 10, 10 to 18 nearly almost, can have trouble finishing short answer tests and time allotted. So that time, and um, that time piece is a big one. And this is going to be a big challenge for them going forward. So for things like the junior cert exams, leaving cert exams, classroom test environment, um, the dividing time, even for studying at home, it can be very hard to like, you know, all right, I'll only do um, 40 minutes on one particular subject. Understanding that and why you prioritize one subject over another. Can lose track of time and is often still in the middle of something. So again, that time piece. Procrastinate. So again, that task initiation. So we'll put off doing something and starting a new project or starting a new task. Um, doesn't know when he or she has overstayed their welcome as they get into teen years and adult years. This can continue to be a challenge. Um, has trouble working in groups and complains that others aren't working with him or her. Um, so yeah, that, that understanding piece and that where that social skill breakdown starts to happen. And can find it hard to incorporate feedback into a work or an activity. And tends to be impulsive, engage in risky behaviour. So this is something to to keep an eye on and to for any parent of a teen there or anyone in their teen years that they can be more susceptible to to those challenges. Okay. So then signs of executive functioning issues in the adults can have trouble with emotion. So that emotional input control and emotional regulation can continue to be a challenge um, later on can be over overly angry over something or overly upset over something and understanding the context and the environment when that's appropriate and when that's not may not may not happen. Um, problems with starting or completing tasks. Um, yeah, can certainly be a challenge, even even with adults who are in um, a very good working position and in a very good job. I remember talking to an adult about um, it must be about four or five years ago now, and they were talking to me about some of the challenges that they have at work, that they can just sometimes sit there and just struggle to get that started. But when they're started, they're fine. And when they're doing it, they're fine. It's just get that started and to decide which is the most important thing or not. So this is something that can continue on. <clears throat> Issues with pay, paying attention or learning. Um, so th- that distractibility um, can continue to be a challenge. Uh, short-term memory problems. So that working memory and short-term memory problems, again, that can continue on. Um, inability to multitask. So that is, is certainly a challenge. So juggling one uh, more than one thing at a time um, can be can be challenging. Yeah, various social issues again. So that can sometimes lead back to the trouble with emotions and difficulty breaking down, solving or overcoming problems. So I, I put all three in there and probably put them into the one category, but that um, problem solving side of things and then once they have kind of solved that problem, parking it and leaving it be can be can be a big challenge as well. So breaking it down into the different tasks and then solving it, overcoming it, and then getting getting over it uh, after that as well. Okay, so one thing we would say was um, an input from a neuropsychologist or occupational therapist or both, ideally both, um, can be very important. And what they will often ask is what are the main challenges for the individual or the family? So how is this impacting them? So I know they would do a battery of different type of tests, but these are additional questions that they would ask. So the how that um, how the challenges with executive functioning um, would affect their everyday living or their everyday functioning. 
So where the person's goals for work, college, school, or in the family environment, in their own environment, if they're adults, um, and then what are their goals for work and college and what measures need to be put in place to help achieve those goals. Then there is also um, so to be mindful that there is often a relationship with other difficulties. So like I mentioned a little bit before, that language interpretation and processing can be a big challenge. Um, memory and again working memory is issue and short-term memory um, and then perception so visual perception is something that really crosses over a lot with executive functioning challenges because there are there are some similarities again with the language interpretation and processing that can be a challenge and then there are some fine motor tasks that would impact that as all these challenges as well so how they relate to the other difficulties is very important to look at the big picture and not just executive functioning on its own. And then a comparison with others of the same age, background, gender or disability. So, you know, what, not that there is, there is no, you have spina bifida and or hydrocephalus or you have hydrocephalus, you know, that there is no definitive answer as to how it will affect one person compared to the, to the other. But there are some things that would be that be common common traits, and then how the person with the condition or conditions and their family are coping. So it's very important to look at the whole big picture, and that's what the neuropsychologists and the occupational therapists will often do: is look at the big picture and look at solutions around that. And then what kind of rehabilitation advice or adaptation should be offered? So that that can be very important. Okay, so I'm going to give a few just in, in particular, these would really impact for short for memory for memory challenges. So just things mm -hmm. that can help. Um, keeping a notepad nearby to make a note of um, calls or messages. Um, putting essential information on a notice board. Deciding on a place to keep important um, objects. Now I know I could do with this myself. Um, so keys, wallet glasses, etc. having one place. And then when you have that place, putting things back to that place every time. So good habit and a good routine. Okay, and attaching important information items to yourself. We, it's probably too much information for yourself, but my, one of my sisters was always losing her glasses, always. I don't know what it was, but glasses. We were always messing that, you know, she should be like one of those people that wear the neck cord for reading glasses. But she eventually did because she kept losing classes. But um, yeah, it, it, things like that can really help. So again, adapting the environment. Labeling. So you can see the dog there with his label, but that's that's why he's in there. Um, but labeling things can be a really good way to help um, take a lot of that working memory um, challenge out of things. You know, so the cupboard, storage, the food rooms, books, where you keep things, using labels can really, really help um, people with uh, executive functioning difficulties. It can take a little bit of the load off. Then external memory aids. So there's quite a few things in there. So I'll, I'll let you read that for a second. But different visual type reminders, you know, nice colorful things, you know, like your little sticky labels, your um, sticky notes, diaries, notebooks, clocks, watches. I know the um, octopus watch in particular was good for smaller kids. Um, but then little watches with reminders or apps on your phone um, can be can be great um, to put in little reminders, wall charts, whatever really works for the child or the adult to keep them organized and to keep to take again that that mental load off and take that memory a challenge off that these things are done in a set routine or set, you know, tick box or um, very obvious, obvious um, solutions. And then following a routine can be um, a good way of doing things as well. So the more routine oriented um, people are, it can just get into a good little habit. It can reduce the demands on memory. And changes to the routine, this is the problem. If you have a routine, the changes to routine, they can be upsetting some managing those, um, but they there are they are often necessary. You can't plan for absolutely everything, but explaining the changes can help an individual or, you know, them kind of 
people around them, family, so family or friends, or you know, explaining any of these challenges if they come up. So giving plenty of spoken and written reminders for the changes. Okay. Um, can help strategies that can help with routines or diaries or calendars again and chart of regular events so open a notice board so something visual so using pictures so using pictures from the home using photos um can can be very good um good visual reminders a lot of our young people and adults um with spina bifida and our hydrocephalus can be very visually orientated so using visual cues can be very can be very helpful Okay, so different things that can help. So we'll break these down. So step-by-step -step instructions. So what you want to do, if it's one big long task, it just won't work for an individual. It'll be too much, too overwhelming, and too hard to break down. So breaking it down bit by bit would be very important. So as I mentioned there, breaking down complex tasks, simplifying the directions. If it doesn't need to be said in 20 words and could be said in five, say it in five. Consistent daily routine. So like I mentioned a while ago, routine, people are often very routine oriented. So consistent daily routine can be very good and helpful. So cueing in important information. So like saying something like, I'd like you to really remember this. This part is really important. So knowing what's important and what's not, because as I mentioned, this is a challenge for um, children and adults with executive functioning difficulties. So knowing, planning and prioritizing, so knowing what's important and what's not. And quick review before new. So what I mean by that is if they are learning something, having a review of what they have learned before can sometimes help to chunk more pieces on. Um, if you just start with a new thing, they might have forgotten the previous. So you might just have to just spend a little bit of time reminding of the old, adding the new. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, checking in frequently. So making sure somebody's listening or understood. And this is both with adults and children with executive functioning difficulties. Because I have um I've often spoken to adults and and I, I, I do this when I talk to schools and everything, and you know when people are listening and when they're not, they have the far away look. Um, so just checking in frequently and making sure people have understood and are hearing what you're saying. So highlighting keywords or ideas, um, that in particular was important in a school environment. Using visual cues, be it adults or children, those visual, um, they're very visually orientated individuals. Um, with spinal bifida and or hydrocephalus can be. And then encouraging to-do lists and checklists, et cetera. So that's that's a good habit, whether you have executive functioning challenges or not. Um, having good to-do lists and checklists will keep you, keep you organized and will help with organizational skills. I remember speaking with um, a school of a teenager and they said that person did really, really well by having um, to-do lists and checklists. And that person then went to college, did really well. And has since, because I've been in SVHI a little while now, um, is, is working so and has done well by having some of these things already in place um, to keep them keep them on track for because they're life skills, you know. So encouraging them early and using measures early can be quite important. OK, so I did say to people that I would only be between 20 and 30 minutes. So I think I'm just a little over 30 minutes. But what I'd like to conclude with is when individuals have issues with executive functioning, so any tasks that requires planning, organization, memory, time management and flexible thinking can be a challenge. So bear that in mind with any of the activities or tasks. Um, you know, and uh, what I did say to one adult who had um, executive functioning difficulties was not to be so hard on themselves as well, that this is a challenge and something that they have to get measures in place to, to alleviate some of the challenges and some of the difficulties. Um, it's not something that comes inherently and doesn't mean that somebody can't do something. It doesn't mean somebody can't do something really well. There might just have to be good measures and good routines and good systems in place to keep that person on track. So simple adjustments, plans and good routines can really, really help. 
Okay, so I want to thank you all for listening to me and um, your questions are welcome. So I'm going to turn off my uh, PowerPoint here and take any questions. Um, my favourite thing about doing webinars is the question and answer section, if I'm honest. Okay. Um, okay, so there was a question in here. Um, any suggestions for the next level up from the Octopus? Um, would that be Fitbit? I, I can look into that. Um, because some things are better than others. And there are some thing, like things like um, apps on a phone, but if if the person is young and you don't want them to have phones, this this might not be the option. So I, I know who has asked that question and I will I will look into it a little bit more and then I can answer everybody as well. Um, okay, would it be a sign of executive functioning issues if a child takes ages to eat their meals? Um, that one can be executive functioning or it can be processing, um, a very slow processing speed. Um, so that, and it can be a combination of both. Um, and that can be definitely a challenge that we've come across. So I noticed that from the school environment where a child would be doing the work and they can't be hurried on and they can't be pushed along um, because that, that processing speed, it'll just work at the speed it will work. Um, so it, it can it can be um, it can be a combination of a few different things. <clears throat> so processing, textural, um, uh, fine motor, and also executive function. Okay, and then somebody came in here as well and said thanks um, that they've learned some new things. That's brilliant. That's that's what I like to hear. Okay. Okay, so another question has come in. Um, how would you know if you have executive functioning? Um, because I've noticed I can identify some of the processing, processing problems, but not others. Um, I, is this, I'm not sure if this is an adult or in a child and what's the context? So um, like we, I would say with a lot of the, a lot of the different challenges, so like language interpretation processing, executive functioning, visual perception. Um, the fine motor is actually a bit more. Um, there, there can You can have some challenges in some areas and not in others. So you might have no problems with that emotional or impulse control, but you might have poor planning and prioritizing and poor um, organizational skills. Or you might be okay at the planning and prioritizing, and have challenges elsewhere. It's not a kind of one size fits all. And, and that's sometimes the challenge with, um, with disability is it's not, it's not a one size fits all, sorry. Um, it's, a, it's an adult. Um, okay, so it's problems in processing for some things, but not um, in relation to some tasks. Yeah, you can have just key areas that you, you, you'd be poorer at um, and would have challenges with. Um, so, like I mentioned there, it, it could be um, it could be like that. It could be just the planning and prioritizing that is is very poor. And you might have built good mechanisms for dealing with anything else. So you might have no problem with that flexible approach or that adapting and that self monitoring. But it's the task initiation that might might be a challenge. Okay. Okay, just something that has helped us in our family is Octopus Watch for reminders. And they have now moved down to a cheap Android watch, an old phone utilizing reminders in the Google Calendar. Absolutely. Um, also, a see through pencil case. That's a great idea. Um, so, thank you very much for that suggestion. Um, there, there are a lot of very, very practical things that can really, really help. Again, those see through folders as well are really, really good ones. If you're having boxes, um in in a home or school having those see through and having them labeled can really really help so one box for it could be lego or it could be play-doh it could be and i'm only thinking of my own house here i have boxes with different different categories of things um i'm not a generally an organized person so i have to put these things in place okay um do primary school teachers or snas know about executive functioning not always no and they can be, children can be misdiagnosed or mislabeled, I suppose, not diagnosed, mislabeled as being lazy or unmotivated when in fact these are challenges that they have to overcome. Like an everyday task 
involves so many different executive functioning um, steps. I know I give that example and simplified example of drawing a picture, but if you do anything, you have to plan your time, you have to plan your activity, you have to plan your environment around it. It, it can be very challenging if you don't have that inherently. We do a lot of that in our head. Um, even maths, doing maths problems in school or maths problems at home, we just throw that information up there and it's in our working memory and we move on. For somebody with executive functioning challenges, these can be really, really difficult. <clears throat> now, what I would say as well, if anybody wants to ask me more specific questions, um, I will answer them as best I can. Um, I would always recommend um, that if anyone is having serious issues in any of these areas to, to get a neuropsychological assessment because the, the neuropsychologists are brilliant um, for adults or for children. And there's some brilliant ones around the country as well. Um, I know both, uh, yeah, and I was about to say in Temple Street and Beaumont, I'm not, I'm not very familiar with the ones in Cromwell, but I do know some private ones as well. Uh, can you develop process functioning as you get older? I might answer that one separately if that's all right, um, just to get more information um, so I can answer it better. Okay. So I just want to thank you all very much for coming to the presentation. I will be sending everybody a copy of it, a recording of it. And if anybody has any questions, my email address is kdunphy at sbhi.ie. And I'm more than happy to answer anything I can. If I can't answer it, I'll try and find out the information for you. Um, I won't give you, I won't send you down a bad road. Okay, so thank you very much, everybody. Now, next week's webinar is with James Cawley. He's the policy officer in Independent Living Movement Ireland, and he's going to be talking about living independently. Um, this is following on for the, from the Ask Me Anything session that um, Respite and Recreation are running um, just beforehand. So the 23rd of February is going to be advertised shortly. So the 23rd of February is the next um next webinar and that is around living independently with james cawley from the independent living movement ireland i think i have it all down there from memory and it's at 11 a.m and it will be advertised shortly okay so thank you very much i'm going to finish this up now and thank you again bye everybody <laughs>